Hi y'all, this is Mrs. D, and today we're going to be going over one-step equations with multiply and divide. If you missed the add and subtract video, you can catch that one as well. It's going to be very similar as far as the steps go, but let's go ahead and get started. So when we're solving one-step equations, our first step is going to be to identify the term on the same side of the equation with the variable. So let's look at a couple of examples. So this one I have 4x equals 20. Well, just so we understand, the variable is our x, and the 4 and the variable side by side without any signs or any operations in between means that these are actually multiplying. So we have 4 times x equals 20. So we want to first identify what's going on on the same side as the variable. And in this case, I'm multiplying times 4. For the second example, we want to find out what's happening on the same side as my variable. On this one, I have x is still my variable. And I have x over 7, like a fraction. So on this side, x is dividing by 7. And that's going to equal 3. So now that we've identified what's happening on the same side of the equal sign with the variable, we want to next balance the equation by performing the opposite operation on both sides of the equal sign. So again, back to the same example, number one, we have 4 times x equals 20. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. For my example 2, I have x divided by 7. The opposite of dividing by 7 is multiplying times 7. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So let's move on to step 3. For step 3, we're going to isolate the variable by solving both sides of the equation to find the value of that variable. So let's go ahead and now take the same examples. And we're going to solve it. So in this case, I add 4x divided by 4 and 20 divided by 4 on the right side. Well, when we solve this, 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times x just equals x. So the left side, I have isolated my variable. On the right side, I have 20 divided by 4, which equals 5. So in this case, x equals 5. Now, if you watch the video with add and subtract for solving one-step equations, we can still take our answer and substitute for the variable in the original problem and make sure that it works. So if I substitute a 5 here for x, 4 times 5 equals 20. So that one does check out to be correct. For my second example, I had x divided by 7. The opposite was multiplying by 7 on both sides. Well, 7 divided by 7 on the left side equals 1. 1 times x equals x. On the right side, 3 times 7 equals 21. So in this case, x equals 21. Again, if I plug this in to the original problem, 21 divided by 7 equals 3. So this one checks out as well. A lot of these earlier problems are going to be pretty easy to solve without actually doing the math work. But it's important to understand the steps that you're taking so that you can make sure you understand what you're doing when these problems start getting harder. So let's go through some practice problems now. So we have 5 times x, which is what's happening with my variable. And the opposite of multiplying by 5 is dividing by 5. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times x is x. On the right side, 35 divided by 5 equals 7. And you can always double check by putting it back into the original equation. 5 times 7 is actually 35. For the second example, we have x divided by 5. 
the opposite of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. You know those cancel, so all I have left on the right left side is x, and on the right side, 6 times 5 equals 30. If I plug it back in, 30 divided by 5 in the original problem equals 6. Example 3. Now, this one is a little bit different, and we've done a couple of these in the past, but now I have 2 thirds x equals 6. Well, 2 thirds, I'm not doing an opposite of multiplication, because that would be division, but I'm not, but I'm also dividing. So, in order to solve this one, you want to actually do the reciprocal, or multiply by the reciprocal of your fraction. And what that means is we're going to multiply by flipping the fraction. And whatever I do to one side, I still have to do to the other side. So what I'm actually doing is 3 divided by 3, 2 divided by 2. Now I have just x on this side. The other thing you could do is 3 times 2 on top is 6. 2 times 3 on the bottom is 6. And 6 over 6 equals 1. 1 times x equals x, so now I have 6 times 3 divided by 2 on the right side. 6 times 3 on top is 18, 18 divided by 2 equals 9. Now, let's plug this in and see if we're correct. So if I were to plug in a 9 for x, 9 times 2 is 18. 18 divided by 3 equals 6, which is the original number in our problem, so that does check out. For example 4, I want you to use the same process from example 3, where you multiply times the reciprocal. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own first. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal, which is 5 over 1. Now you can tell again that this cancels, because 5 times 1 and 1 times 5 are both 5, and 5 over 5 equals 1. 1 times x equals x. On the right side, I have x times 5 is 40, and 40 divided by 1 equals 40. So let's go ahead and recap our steps here when we're doing one-step equations with multiplying and dividing. First, we want to identify the term on the same side of the equation with the variable. Then we want to balance the equation by performing the opposite operation on both sides of the equal sign. And third, I want to isolate the variable by solving both sides of the equation to find the value of the variable. So if you remember on step two, when I'm performing the opposite operation, that just means if the number and the variable are multiplying, I'm going to divide. If they're dividing, I'm going to multiply. And then back to the other video, if you're adding, the opposite operation is to subtract. And if the problem has the number and the variable subtracting, the opposite operation is to add. All right, this is just the basic of one-step equations, so if you need more help, you can watch the video a couple of times to go through the examples, but then be ready to ask some specific questions if you still have problems understanding the concept. This is Mrs. D signing off. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.